wrong is a part of trading, and this week I ended up being wrong on the S&P 500. I was expecting a little bit of a correction before we saw some more downside, and that didn't end up happening. The market just shot lower. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about where I went wrong and how you could have taken advantage of this price action to make some money this week. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, and with that being said, let's jump right into the recap. So taking a look at this chart right here, we have the daily chart on the S&P 500 futures, the ES. And as you guys can see, we had a very bearish end to the week. You guys see these daily candles are just shooting lower and we ended up trading through this key level right here, which I told you guys is the deciding factor. This level is where I was watching to see if the market was going to go long and continue this bullish trend or if we were going to go bearish from here. And as you guys can see, it ended up being the latter. We sold off right through this level. We didn't even really give it a chance. So in a moment, I'll show you guys why I was paying attention to that level. But let's go ahead and hop onto a lower time frame chart and take a look at the price action that occurred inside of this down move. And we're gonna take a look at two more institutional trading charts today. We're gonna be taking a look at a higher time frame view app. That's where I got that key level from. And then I'm gonna show you guys a market profile chart. You know, technically it's gonna be three institutional trading charts. I'm gonna show you a monthly market profile and an RTH market profile. So looking at this chart right here, you guys will see that we're continuing that bearish market chart. Structure. Now, around this point is where I was expecting a little bit of a bullish correction before we continue to go lower. We did find that the market paused a little bit, gave a small push up, but that did not last as the market sold off quickly thereafter. But you still could have followed the market structure that was being put in place. If we go ahead and get rid of this arrow, because it's useless, right? You guys see here that we did create a lower low. And we had that bearish expansion that we um, keep talking about. We see the phases of the market structure working out very nicely. And um, hold on, I just want that line to be a little bit more accurate on the low. There we go. And one second, let's go ahead and just match it up with all the other lines. And you'll see here that after we created this lower low, after we sold off through the low, we gave this bearish expansion and that was followed by a bullish correction. So this move right here is following that market structure that we've been paying attention to. So even though we did not get that full move higher that I was anticipating, we still could have used the same logic, the same analysis to figure out that, okay, we just sold off. We're probably going to see a little bit of a correction and this could help you decide maybe you wanna get long off of this low for a short term buy or you're just gonna wait for the market to continue the trend and sell off lower. So from here, we ended up selling off and created a new lower low, and we had that new bearish, ex bearish expansion to the downside. So like I said, we did not get that bullish rally that I was expecting before more downside, but we did end up selling off and continuing this bearish market structure. Like I said, it's always a little bit safer to go with the trend. You know, this, this key level right here, a lot of people would say that it's a demand zone, that daily demand zone. For me, it was the higher time frame, lower extremes on a quarterly VWAP. A lot of people probably were looking at this level thinking, you know what, the market structure is bullish. We have a demand zone. Let's go ahead and place a buy limit there, our stop loss here, take profit here, and just let the market do its thing. Sorry, my phone just went off. But as you guys can see, the market just sold off right through that zone. So it's always easier to follow the market structure instead of predict some major change that all of a sudden we're gonna go bullish from there. So keep that in mind, whenever you're analyzing the charts, you always want to react to what's going on at this um, key level, whatever level you're looking at. So in this case, if you waited for price to develop, you would have seen that there was no real reason to be looking for buy opportunities here. The market structure is 100% bearish. And like I said, for the daily to go bullish, remember that bullish market structure we've been looking at all week, the four hour would also need to go bullish. And as you can see, that did not happen. The four hour has been bearish all week long. There wasn't even a hint of bullish price action except for these corrections, but the market structure never switched bullish. So all in all, you should have been looking to get short this week and you could see here that there were some good opportunities, but I'm gonna go ahead and share with you guys really quickly the quarterly VWAP because this is the key level that I was paying attention to that I told you guys that I would share with you at a later date. So right here, looking at this VWAP, you guys will see that this is basically a chart that's showing us all of the price action and calculating the average traded price from July, the beginning of July, 
all the way to the current price action, basically the third quarter of the year. And overall, there's a lot of things going on with this chart, but to me personally, it is balanced and until recently, but all of this price action right here is balanced and I'll tell you why. It's because we're moving from one extreme to the other. We went from the lower extremes through the average traded price to the upper extremes, back to the average traded price, and then down to the lower extremes. So if this balanced condition was to continue, I would have been looking for the market to offer some support at these lower extremes and move back to VWAP. Following this rhythm where we go from one extreme to the other, and we always move back to the VWAP. However, you guys see here that this did not happen. Instead of buyers stepping in at these very undervalued prices, way underneath the average traded price, we saw that sellers got increasingly aggressive here. Basically, sellers were accepting lower prices, and that's why we see that the market is now going imbalanced at these lower extremes, and it looks like it's just falling off the side of a cliff. It's because we are going imbalanced. The market condition went from being balanced to imbalanced. So this is exactly why I mentioned that this is a very important area to me because we easily could have seen the market find support here and move back to VWAP and it wouldn't be anything out of the usual. But we see here that we ended up going bearish and selling off. So how could you have taken advantage of this move? And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how using two different market profile charts. And the first one you guys are familiar with, it's going to be the monthly market profile. So let's go ahead and take a look at the monthly market profile chart. And you guys will see right here that we continue to move away from the previous month's value area low. We got that rejection. And um, what I told you guys was that I was looking for a little bit of a move back towards that value area low around here, around this area, but we did not get that. The thing is the market likes to search for value. It's going to move from one area of value to the next. And the reason this happens is because the goal of the market is to facilitate trade. And basically what that means is the market wants volume to come in. It wants buyers to buy the market. It wants sellers to sell the market. And whenever both sides of the market is happy, whenever both buyers and sellers are happy to do business, that is known as value or two-way trade and the market searches for areas where two-way trade is going to happen, AKA value. And sometimes what happens is the market goes one-sided. It, it creates one-way trade and one-way trade is when the market is searching for that value. It's moving to a new area of value where it can facilitate trade. So all in all, what I'm trying to tell you guys is using the market profile, we can find areas of value. We have the value area, and we have the point of control. So in this case, as we started to move away from this area of value to the downside, the next area of value is this right here. This is a point of control that has never been traded into from June, I believe. Yeah, that's June's point of control. So as the market began to move away from this area of value, we should be anticipating the market to move down towards this point of control, the next area of value. The market likes to move from one area of value to the next. And I did not actually take any trades after the ones I showed you in Wednesday's video. And the reason is I really messed up my back working out or training or something like that, you guys. So I've just been taking it easy for the, for the rest of this week. So I did not get to take advantage of this price action, but this was absolutely beautiful stuff. We moved from one area of value to the next and um, let's go ahead and hop on over to another market profile chart. You know, I'm really spoiling you guys. We looked at two institutional trading charts in um, Wednesday's video. Now we're looking at three in today's video. We're on a roll. So here we have the RTH market profile. And you might be wondering, what is the RTH session? RTH stands for regular trading hours. And that is basically known as the pit session or the cash session. Those are some of the other names that it has, but basically it is the 9.30 to 4.15 trading session on the S&P 500, which pretty much lines up with the New York Stock Exchange trading session. But basically this is the time period that I'm personally trading the market because that's where the most volume is coming in. So I really only pay attention to the levels that are created in this time period. So this market profile is only showing where the market has spent time every day in this 9.30 to 4.15 period, okay? So taking a look at these charts right here, or not charts, at these profiles, 
Let's start off with um, this profile right here. You guys will remember that I took a short position on Tuesday, and this is Tuesday's profile right here. And basically, I want you guys to remember what we just went over on the monthly market profile and the quarterly VWAP, that sellers are searching for lower value. And what this means at the same time, if sellers are happy to do business at lower prices, that also means that sellers are rejecting higher prices. So when, um, or higher value, higher prices, same thing, they're rejecting higher value. So we can use this market profile to figure out where value is on a day by day basis. And then if we have the idea that yes, sellers are searching for value, they're searching for lower value and they're rejecting higher value. Well, we can use the market profile to figure out where higher value is. So looking at this chart right here on Tuesday, you guys will see here that we had the previous day's value area. And as you can see, we did end up rejecting this perfectly. And you know what I'm going to do? Let's go ahead and put these two charts side by side so you guys can see what this really looks like now. I know I have a ton of charts here, so let me find the RTH profile. Where is it? It's somewhere here. Um, 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 bear with me, you guys. Where is it? I was just looking at it. We have quarterly, we have minute, quarterly, yearly. Oh, I'm, I'm dumb. The, the profile's right here. We need this chart. Excuse me, you guys. I'm blonde, so I had a little bit of a blonde moment. So anyways, looking at this chart right here, let's go ahead and hide all of the drawings on this chart. There we go. And now let's go ahead and sync these charts together so we can see the same drawings pop up. That's chart number 16. There we go. All right, everybody. So let's go ahead and hop on down to a lower time frame chart. We could use the five minute for, um, you know, I guess that's all right. But basically, you guys will see how, like I said, using the logic that sellers are constantly accepting lower value. Meanwhile, they're rejecting higher value. You'll see how we keep rejecting all this week. We kept rejecting the previous day's value. So let's go all the way back to Tuesday. And as I mentioned, this was actually the short position that I took. And really quickly, let me just show you guys. You know, if I had just held on to a little bit of a partial, you guys would see here that this trade would have ran extremely far. So looking right here, and this is that area that I got short. Let's just put a line there. This is that short that I took. Now let's zoom out a little bit and um, see how far that this trade would have ran. I mean, you guys see how crazy that is. Should have just held on, right? But you know, everything is more clear in hindsight. So anyways, let's go ahead and hop on over to these charts and just see how you guys take, could have taken advantage of all of this price action. So right here, we have Tuesday. And um, basically... Hold on, is this Tuesday? No, I believe that is Wednesday. One second, you guys, this is the 15th. Yeah, so here we go. Yeah, okay, I had the right one. I, I was just a little bit off. So basically, taking a look at this chart right here, this is Tuesday's price action, and this is that same short that I just showed you guys. And basically, you'll notice how we ended up trading into the previous day's value area low, and we found resistance there. Why did we find resistance there? It's because, like I just told you guys, sellers are rejecting higher value. So that's exactly why we sold off and began searching for lower value. Sellers were looking to do business at lower prices. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the next trading day. So Tuesday is over. Now we have a new value area for Tuesday. Let's go ahead and take a look at what happened on Wednesday. So let's go ahead and open this profile and you guys can already see that the market traded up into this value area and then went bearish for the rest of the day. That's because sellers are rejecting this higher value. So let's see what that looks like on a candlestick chart right here. Let's scroll over and right around here. No, that's the overnight session. Here we go, coming into the RTH session, that 9.30 to about um, 11 o'clock. You guys see here that the market kept finding resistance around this value area low before it went really, really bearish. So why did the market find resistance here? Not because there is a triple top or a trend line or something like that. It's because sellers are stepping in and responding to these higher prices. Buyers are not so interested in the higher prices. It's the sellers that are interested. And like we just went over on the monthly market profile, 
They believe that value is way lower. So even though the market seems to be trading at a very cheap price, it just sold off a lot, it's actually above what they perceive value to be. If traders believe that value is all the way down here, then all of a sudden, this seems like a very high price. Even though in the grand scheme of things, it's a very cheap price, right? We're coming off of this huge drop it still seems like a good price to be selling the market. So that's exactly why we found resistance at that value area low and went bearish for the rest of the day. Now let's take a look at what happened today on Thursday. It's a very similar story and Thursday we went very bearish. Let's go ahead and mark up Wednesday's value area and let's take a look at what happened today. So let's scroll through and take a look at what happened around here. Sorry, I went past it, I believe. Um, where is it? This is 817. Where is 930? Um, it's right here. Okay. So right at the open, we literally, the market opened right here at 930 AM this morning, right here. This is the opening price traded up into that value area low perfectly before it went completely bearish, you guys. So you see here that once again, the market did not sell off from here because of a resistance level or because there's a trend line or maybe a moving average or Fibonacci level. It sold off here because sellers are rejecting these higher prices. And if you have access to this information, you know what, you guys, I'm really going to spoil you. Let's go ahead and take a look at a footprint chart at a at an order flow chart and really see what happened at that value area low today. So right here, coming into the RTH session, look what happened at this value area low. It's so hard to ignore. A lot of people will say, you know, there's a imbalance there, there's an FVG, there's a demand zone, a supply zone, whatever you want to, you know, justify the move with. But here on the order flow, we can clearly see this value area low at the 43, sorry, 44.33, 75 level what happened you guys will see here look at this candle bearish candle strong negative delta high volume that's telling us that sellers are in control of this candle that's why we found resistance here and then in the very next candle you'll see here we even came back up and tested it again the candle opened came back up and tested the value area low and then rejected it one more time with very strong selling and high volume. So this is the candle that you wanna be trading off of, or this one, both of these candles were confirmation candles that sellers are indeed rejecting higher value and you should be looking to get short. And from here, you see how the market just keeps slamming lower. The price is going lower, market is trading lower. The Delta is getting stronger. So sellers are getting stronger and stronger at these lower prices. That's once again, telling us that sellers are in control. Now look at this, we got a little bit of a pullback. The market went bullish for a moment. It looked like sellers were kind of getting trapped around here. We can see that there's a lot of volume in this candle. The Delta went from minus 2000 to about minus 600. So sellers were getting trapped here, but let's see what happens from here. We trade back up into the value area low one more time, and then we sell off with some strong selling. We can see that negative Delta it's not as strong as, you know, 2000, but we can see all of these selling imbalances. We can see the bearish candle that sellers are definitely in control here. And let's see what happens from here. Market keeps going bearish, more strong negative Delta minus 1500 selling imbalances. Sellers are in control. And from here, the market just trades lower with more strong selling. I mean, look at that negative Delta, you guys. Minus 1,500, minus 1,200, minus 1,600. The market is just slamming lower. Sellers are constantly accepting these lower prices. Meanwhile, they are rejecting the higher prices. So once again, you guys, the market did not sell off because it ran into some sort of, you know, double top or uh, imbalance. It might look like that in hindsight, but in reality, we were just rejecting higher value and the market was just, you know, searching for new value. Sellers were searching for new value and rejecting higher value. All right, you guys. So that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. I'm really sorry that it wasn't as exciting as, you know, showing it, it would have been a great video, right? If I showed you guys that I got short right here at the high and I caught this entire down move, you know, that would have made for a great video, but it just didn't happen. You guys, I had a great two be um, two days at the beginning of the week. And like I said, my back is killing me. Even just for sitting here recording and talking, my back is in so much pain. So I didn't get to trade, but 
Regardless, it was a very nice trading week. Even though I was wrong, we did not get that full rally that I was expecting off of this area back here. Even though we did not get that rally higher, just like this, before we sold off, we did fill that bearish bias that I was telling you guys about on the um on the weekly chart. Remember, if you guys remember going back two weeks, even at the beginning of this week, last week, if we just really quickly take a look at this chart, let's um get rid of that one. Let's take a look here. On the weekly chart, you guys will remember I told you that I am bearish. I'm expecting the market to sell off more because we are coming off of this massive bullish expansion. And as you guys can see, the market is filling that bias perfectly. So even though I was technically wrong, I still was somewhat right. And the thing is, I don't care about being wrong, you guys. I'm not afraid of being wrong. It's not the first time and it's definitely not gonna be the last time. But regardless, you guys will see that we've had a pretty nice couple of um last three actually not a couple the last few trading weeks have yielded us some very good price action we'll see what the next week has in store for us but that basically finishes it off for today's video i hope you guys have a great weekend and i will see you in monday's video with my updated analysis for the s p 500 i'll see you guys then peace out everybody